Whenever he enters a room, the vibration of that space changes and becomes infused with the energy of love. And I know you felt it already because he is here in this room emanating love. You know, of course, who I'm speaking about. Our beloved pastor, Reverend John, I invite you to welcome him as he deserves to be welcomed loudly and robustly <laughs> as he brings us his message, his encouragement this Christmas Sunday morning. <laughs> Good morning, friends and family. I never know what to say when Christmas has passed and New Year's hasn't come. You can't say Merry Christmas. So I've started saying Happy New Merry, which covers everything. So Happy New Merry to you all and to those that join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. You know, for the entire month of December, we have concentrated on reminding ourselves of the light that we are. This inner light is celebrated by people of widely diverse religious, cultural, and spiritual practices. I have friends who celebrate the winter solstice on December 21st, and in fact, I was invited to their get together, but it was the evening of our marvelous Christmas concert, and my, prior my priorities always are, of course, first with the temple. But I sent them happy winter solstice greetings. Then my Jewish friend celebrated Chanukah, which I think ended Dana on the 24th. Am I right? Yes. So um, they too are celebrating the light. And on Christmas Eve, here at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, we mark the coming of the Christ at our candlelight service and join the Christian world on December 25 in the celebration of Christ Mass. And all of us in New Thought know that when we talk about Christ Mass, we're not talking about a person or a personality. We're talking about the coming of the idea of sonship and daughtership with Almighty God. Everybody is potentially the Christ. And that is truly cause for celebration. On Boxing Day, which is December 26th, my African-American friends began the seven-day celebration of Kwanzaa by also lighting seven candles, signifying seven principles which affirm the strength and beauty of the human spirit. So you see, whatever your religious practice is, your ethnic background or whatever, it's all about being human, isn't it? And therefore, it's about the light that shines from every human heart. Kwanzaa is a story that began in the mind of a young UCLA graduate student named Maulana Karenga. I wonder if he's related to Pauline Karenga, our Pauline. Yes? Wow! Uh, Maulana Karenga, um, in the wake of the LA riots, wanted to do something. He understood why people were rioting. The injustices were no longer tolerable, and people, like the Jews in Chanaka, snapped. You know, friends, throughout history, people have snapped when they could no longer tolerate injustice. Many of us are snapping all the time, aren't we? <laughs> Easy snapping, there's a big rest, okay. Why? We let all things get to us. And we let things get out of hand before we decide to do something. Friends, don't let things get out of hand because you will snap. This center offers ministerial counseling and prayer work by our practitioners. So don't wait until things get out of hand before availing yourself of these valuable services. That is why we are a community to provide support for each other and to listen to each other's heart song when sometimes we are too sad or too down to sing and members of your community can do that singing for you. Back to Dr. Karenga though. He started a holiday that demonstrates Ernest Holmes' wisdom. For Ernest Holmes said we should turn away from the howlers. 
Karanga turned away from the activity of the racists. He turned away from the activity of the rioters and said, quote, look, you can all stay in this conflict if you want to. I am going to start something good over here that affirms that my people are whole, perfect, and complete, unquote. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the homeland of my ancestors and see what they had to offer. Holiday Kwanzaa is a harvest holiday, and so they use fruits. And it is based in seven principles which affirm the strength of the human spirit. It's not a religious holiday, but it certainly, to me, is a spiritual one. For it is very carefully positioned as a cultural holiday to celebrate and uplift African-American life. And yet I think it's one of the strongest spiritual holidays on the planet, which, if it doesn't descend into the, com the commercialism of Christmas, can celebrate and uplift the spirit of every single person in the world, regardless of our racial, political, or religious differences. On each of the seven days of Kwanzaa, a specific principle called Nguzo Saba in Swahili is honored and celebrated. Would you like to hear what the seven principles are? Yes. Umoja, the principle of unity. Kuji Chagulia, the principle of self-determination. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujama, cooperative economics. Nia, purpose. Kaumba, creativity. And Imani, faith. Umoja, Kuji Chagulia, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Koumba, and Imani. Today, which we are celebrating as Christmas Sunday, is day three of Kwanzaa, and it is dedicated to Ujima, which essentially celebrates the spirit of oneness. Now, doesn't that sound like what the, G the beautiful Jesus dedicated his life to teaching? Oneness. Did he not say that he gave a new commandment, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you? Is that not what Ujima and oneness is about? Ujima then, excuse me, reminds us to build and maintain our communities together, and that means we need to listen to each other. God knows after what has happened in Ferguson and New York and right here in Jamaica, we need to listen to one another better. Can I have an amen? amen. Mm -hmm. I want us as a spiritual co community, my friends, to practice listening to each other's heart songs. Sometimes it's not the words we are saying, it's what's coming from here that matters. And I want us to become as a community more loving and more considerate of each other so that when you come onto this property, you feel the acceptance and the love that is the spirit of Christmas and the spirit that, that brought our beautiful Dr. Elmer back to Jamaica to establish this great work. Let us, like the shepherds in the Christmas story, tend our flock of thoughts <clears throat> and listen to the angel voices of our higher selves. And what did these higher thoughts say? Remember what the angel said to the shepherds? Fear not. Fear not. They're still saying, don't be afraid of all the seeming chaos of the outside world. For in you is born this day something so special, so beautiful, so pure that your soul must, like Mary, magnify the Lord. Let's just say together, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Can we say that? Yes. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Put your right hand over your heart and feel the vibration, the resonance as you say that. Together. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And so, friends, Ujima asks us to build and maintain our community together. 
And of course, Kwanzaa is speaking about the African-American community. Oh, Carmen, you're an angel. And thank you, Tony. Yes. Yet you do better to bring it up. I'm just saying. So Kwanzaa speaks to the African-American community, but we can apply this principle to our family of choice. The family that we have created, not just our biological family, but the family of close friends, and of course our spiritual family. It is this Ujima principle that inspires our thrust here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living to be a church without borders. To, to allow our love to expand beyond these, this beautiful property to just embrace and engulf everybody everywhere. Now, one of the greatest ways, my friends, we can build family is to create a family mission statement. And I know it sounds stuffy like it belongs more in a boardroom than in the living room, huh? But it can be a fun exercise that can help strengthen and maintain your family relationships and friendships. And so I have an assignment for you, which you may find interesting. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is between now and next Sunday, together with your family, come up with a mission statement. What is a family mission statement? It's simply a one or two sentence statement that allows you to answer the question, why do we exist? A discussion of this around your dining table with everyone in the family will do the work of Ujima. Somebody at the table may say, the family exists for fun. Another, to provide security. The younger members may say the family exists to provide an allowance and an Xbox, the latest generation of games and entertainment. Am I right? My young adults? Absolutely. But friends, the family or the collection of friends exists for a purpose. And I want you to have some fun coming up with a short mission statement. Couples, if your children are too young or you don't yet have kids, make a mission statement for the two of you. If you are single like I, make a mission statement with your circle of close friends. As you gather over drinks and yet another slice of Christmas cake, pose the question, why do we as a group of close friends exist? I belong to a message posse and they're, they're, they exist to just pass inspiration and, and encouragement and strength from consciousness to consciousness. It's amazing sometimes you get a message that just answers what you need that, in, that, in that very moment. So thank you, Steve Golding, who um, made it happen for me. So when your friends say, why do we hang together? What, you know, what are we here, here for? To, to bitch and, and, and quarrel and talk about how awful things are? Why, what is our mission as a group of friends? And you're going to find it would make some, for some very interesting discussion over another glass of wine and another slice of cake. The last part of the principle of Ujima is that we are our brother's and sister's keeper. That we try where it is appropriate to help them solve their problems and the challenges. No, stop. I'm not wanting you to misunderstand this. This is not a call to codependency. This is a call to oneness. Codependency happens when we think we know how others should lives should be run, and we try to get them to do it our way because we know what's good for them. <laughs> Never mind that they want you to get the hell out of their business. Never mind that you are miserable because they're not seeing your light and seeing it your way. Codependents forget that everyone needs their own journey, and we can't save them from the lessons they are calling into their experience. As our beloved Reverend Elmer used to say, and I quote, before you try and save me, you better look saved yourself, unquote. In other words, solve your own problems and let others see the results of your work. Then you can share with those who ask how you did it. Ojima calls on us not to give up on our brothers and sisters until the shift in their consciousness happens. And the resulting manifestation appears. As in the science of mind, 
we treat until we get the results we require. As we students of the science of mind know, the greatest, most powerful, most meaningful thing we can do for our brothers and sisters in all our communities is to pray for them. When we in this teaching pray, we are not praying for God to do something differently. God has already done God's job, believe me. Jesus, the master shower, the way shower, and the master teacher already proved that. What we, when we pray, we are praying to train our own consciousness, our own minds, to perceive God's goodness in all our, our affairs and the affairs of our fellow humans. We are praying to know the truth, no matter what the outer physical appearance may be, because we know that the physical appearance is temporary, while God is eternal and eternally good. Let us say together, God as my life is eternal. Together? God as my life is eternal. God in my life is eternally good. God in my life is eternally good. Reverend Dr. Georgia Prescott, the Center for Spiritual Living Minister, who shared this wonderful information on Kwanzaa with me, puts it this way, and I want to quote her. When our sisters and brothers are in deep pain, our work is not to yammer on about spiritual truth. That's not the time to give them platitudes, you know. Oh yes, God is everywhere equally evenly present. They're in pain. So, Prescott says, there will be a time for that. But in the depth of someone's pain, we hold each other. We bring each other a casserole. We listen until we think our ears will fall off. And we pray. We practice Ujima. <laughs> We pray, friends, that's what we do here at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. We pray. What a powerful tool that is. You don't have to, to do anything, be, be anywhere. You can do it any time of night or day, in any, whether you're dressed up or you're absolutely naked. It doesn't matter. You can pray on the, in the bathroom. You can pray in your car. We, we pray. That's what we do. And I want to really invite you to deepen your prayer work in the coming months, in the new year. Uh, Dr. Elmer used to say, life is a school and we're not on vacation. I believe it is through the practice of prayer that we begin to awaken to our perfection and our spiritual magnificence. And Ernest Holmes says this of prayer. Quote, prayer is constructive because it enables us to establish closer contact with the fountain of wisdom. And we are less likely to be influenced by appearances around us, to judge according to appearance. Righteous prayer sets the law of the spirit of life in motion for each of us. That's taken from the Science of Mind textbook, page 152, paragraph 3. So next Sunday, at our 9 o'clock celebration, we will do the preparatory work for Monday evening's goal-setting workshop at 6. Our theme for the new year is, I embody well-being in 2015. I embody well-being in 2015. And the focus will be the use of the powerful tool of prayer to nurture our dreams and hopes and aspirations for the future. Friends, just as Kwanzaa is about building community, Christmas is about the light we are called to be in our family, in our neighborhood, in our country, and indeed in the world. A Christmas poem I received from Reverend Dr. Maxine Kay of Boca Raton, Florida, expresses it beautifully, and I would like to close by sharing it with you. Although the light seems hidden from our sight, illumination finally appears. The seed of love, so tiny at the start, becomes a constant warmth throughout the years. For deep within the cosmic heart of God, a silent voice of possibility stirs human hearts to hear the light and love expanding to a new reality. The natural emanation of God's gift emerges fully formed as it gives birth with quiet grace and deep serenity to light 
and love and peace upon the earth. The silent nurture grew love from the start. The sacred seed expands in every heart. Amen. Friends, let us nurture the sacred seed within us with our daily prayers. Let us praise and bless it in everyone we meet. Let us listen, listen, listen to the heart song of our lonely, depressed, abused, disenfranchised, or marginalized brothers and sisters around the globe. And let us proclaim the glad tidings of great joy that right where they are, right where we are, the Christ, the principle of our royalty and our sonship and daughtership is awaiting full recognition. To your neighbor, please say, you are the light and love and peace of the angel song, Happy New Mary. You are the light, the love and the peace of the angel song, Happy New Mary. You are the light, the love and the peace of the angel song, Happy New Mary. Friends, you are the light, the love and the peace of the angel song. Happy New Mary. Namaste.